Hey everybody, it's Matt and Ashley again. Mm -hmm. um, and as usual, we want to thank y'all again. Absolutely. Getting plenty of feedback from you guys and we love it. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of which, going Hold back... Hold on. Oh, sorry. Quick disclaimer. Um, we have a fan going because it's really hot, so there's like this dramatic wind thing going with my hair. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you guys can't really hear it too much in the background. It's really hot though, so it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> there's the... Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so really quick, we just want to, um, in another video, I think believe it was the second saga. Um, We're talking about the advantages of polarized sunglasses and how you guys can get a pair uh, for little cash. <laughs> so if you want to like review that or whatever what we said, go check that out. But we wanted to the give you the results. are finally in. Drum roll please. Brrr. The cheapy polarized sunglasses are definitely an awesome work. bet. After extensive testing, I've done a lot of driving around with them. I've also compared them against Ashley's uh, expensive, expensive ones. polarized sunglasses. And then I've also, like I said, I would do compare them to see how they would how they would do quality wise against normal name brand but non polarized lenses. And mine well obviously there was a world of difference between the, the non polarized non polarized but name and brand the and the cheapy polarized. But, um, awesome. I mean, my eyes just feel so much more comfortable behind the polarized lenses. They really help to reduce the glare. It's like a whole new world out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we found... There is a slight advantage... Very slight. ...between the cheapy polarized sunglasses... And, and my expensive sunglasses. polarized ones. Which, in my defense, I'm kind of glad that they have a little bit of an advantage. If you're going to pay $200 for a pair of sunglasses, yeah. they better be better... Better be better <laughs> than right. the cheapy twenty dollar polarized. However, sunglasses. for twenty bucks, like they, they come worked pretty close, really well. very close, to be honest with you. So, woo! if we weren't doing extensive research, you might not notice that much of a difference. But they came pretty close, so uh, I definitely recommend maybe going out to the mall, checking out some of those kiosks, asking for the polarized sunglasses. They do have them in a variety of different styles, so try to find one that fits your face and uh, rock them. That's right. Okay, so the main mission of this video is albinism and driving. Yes. I know that we kind of went a little bit in depth in the first saga, so if you want to refer to that, go for it. But we also wanted to touch on a couple other things, give a few more details, but it's not, we're going to try to make it a little more like short, sweet, to the point. Well, first of all, where's we the bioptics? Here it is, right here. These are bioptics, or one, are bioptics. one style of bioptics. They are making them thinner now. However, they're they not. Different styles. They're, however, the thinner ones, like on the wire frames, opposed to whatever this is, they aren't as sturdy. However, it is an option if that's what you want. These are kind of goofy, but somehow the frames themselves are kind of growing on me. Like if I were to actually buckle down and get a pair of sunglasses, or regular glasses, seeing glasses, I would get a pair of Wayfarers. That's what this style of frame is called. Except without the uh, little scope anyway. right here from regular glasses. Maybe a little Clark Kent look. I don't know if I could pull it off. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> so yeah, bioptics are just like the glasses with the telescope attached to them. Um, some bioptics have them in both lenses, but most people prefer to just get it, the telescope in one eye, usually the, the dominant the eye. The dominant mm -hmm. eye. Um, Which happens to be my right eye on this case. And mine is my left eye. But that doesn't matter. We complete each other. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so, um, first of all, bioptics are not allowed in every state. We got some feedback from different people, and they were saying, well, I know you say it's great if you just really try hard, you can drive, but unfortunately, we can't drive. And that is something that we forgot to kind of mention. Not all 50 states are allowing the bioptics in use with driving. So, uh, one of the resources that we kind of dug up for you guys. If you want to look up the regulations as far as like if bioptics in general are allowed are in, your in your state, state. go to bioptickdrivingusa.com and then there's like links for all the states and then when you click on your state it shows the different regulations. However, some of you might be saying, but well, Ashley, I'm, out of, I'm, I'm, I'm not even part of the USA, so I might like to look up, you know, another sort of driving alternative outside of the US. 
And then you might check out... Oh, you can go to, um, I believe it's biopticdriving.org, and there they have, like, a drop-down box of, like, different countries, and I assume that you can, um, click on your corresponding country and figure out some more rules, regulations, and all that. Um, but, um, so, as far as the states that do allow driving, um, and you feel comfortable with... They're usually pretty sim uh, the, standard in the process. Yeah. Similar. And as long as you feel comfortable with taking, like, that step to be like, okay, I'm going to at least give it a try to see if I can drive. I'm gonna it is a personal choice. Yeah, because so, not everyone feels comfortable with doing it, and that's fine. That being said, I definitely want to encourage those of you who feel like you want to seek out that extra independence because it really is an extra, I mean, an extra world of independence because uh, I, I've talked to people who may not necessarily like the idea of driving. Some people really want to but are afraid to take that leap and with good reason, because it is scary, especially and for us. And it's scary for everybody. Oh, yeah. I was like, I mean, just talking to my friends that have normal vision and don't have any <clears throat> albinism complications it's or whatever, everyone, yeah. it's going to be scary for anybody. But I mean, obviously, there is a little bit of an extra pressure on us. But, I mean, we both tried it, and so far, it's been So successful. the first thing I recommend is, obviously, go to that resource and find out if it's available in your state. Once you find out that it is available in your state... And I'm going to kind of tell you about the process, at least for Georgia. And after talking to Matt about it, it's kind of a similar pretty thing, much the same thing in California. Basically, the overall general process that all states seem to kind of correspond a little bit, or at least somewhat, is first you go to like a low vision specialist, and then they say whether your vision is... Like, your, whether your acuity matches up with the state regulations or not. And or, we aren't read up on all the states. Exactly. We just know what applies to us. And it's, In our particular that sounds states, kind yeah. of egocentric. But we but, provided the resources sorry, so you guys. guys can go do a little bit of homework. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, go to a low vision specialist. Um, they'll give you thumbs up or thumbs down as to whether you even qualify. Um, once um, once I was approved, I they had to order the bioptic and then... I went back and they made sure that my visual acuity still worked with the bioptic. And then once I did that, I had to have like street training where I just walked around and looked at things to, um, to start being able to drop down into the telescope, see something, and then get out. Now that differed a little bit from uh, California's standards. I don't know if it was because I just told them that I had a lot of experience uh, with with using a monocular and things like that, so I was familiar with the concept. Um, but they didn't require me to do any street training. Uh, I, just, I was just required to get my I, permit. Yeah, I mean, like, then, I breezed through that part because having albinism and using a monocular for my whole life... You guys know how it works. <laughs> yeah, like, it was really easy to adjust, so I actually got to skip a few sessions, I think, um, because they were like, okay, you've got this down. Um, once you do that, <coughs> then... Um, the for me since i turned 18 after i don't know it's some new law anyway but because of my age and when i was born i had to take driver's ed and um which was like 30 hours of classroom instruction and then six hours of behind the wheel driving and so i did that and then while i was in the six hours of behind the wheel driving with another instructor um they had like my low vision specialist gave them a checklist of things that they had to cover and that they had to do with me and um and that was like that was just specifically because I was a bioptic driver and like things like that were like U-turns driving on a regular street, driving in a neighborhood, driving on a highway like they had to go through all these things to make sure that visually I was capable of doing it and um once you finish that then the um, driving school has to send that form, that checklist, back to your low vision specialist and then to the DMV, and then the DMV clears you, and then you can go get your license. Um, that differs a little bit from Calif what California had me well, do, Well, like we're saying, it's not going to be the exact process in every state. Well, However, it's going to be similar. I was just giving the California side. Right. Um, because I know there are some of you in California. <laughs> and... Um, 
In California, it was actually a little bit easier because in California, as far as all the, getting all the way up to your permit level, they don't really do anything as far as checking for vision. So I went through my driver's ed training like way back when I was 16. And, um, but Matt tried to get his license when he was younger, and I didn't even try until I was yeah. 18 or 19. So that's why that differed a little bit, too. Also, um, they didn't really do any sort of corresponding with the driving school because at that point, when I was going for the bioptic, I already had my permit. So the only additional thing that they had me do was schedule a schedule driver's training with a specialist. Now, this is a low drive, uh, low vision driving specialist. So it's kind of like driving school, except just the driving portion and with this specialist. And they try to, you know, give you a little bit of uh, tips and tricks on how to better cope and um, use more cognitive but ways the, of thinking in order to drive. The law that applied to me that didn't apply to Matt was only put into, like, was people only born st after started in, mm -hmm. they started only enforcing that law. Like for people born after 1990 or something, I think. So if you're watching this and you were born after that or your child has albinism and you're thinking about driving for them, more than likely it's going to be more similar to my situation. However, it might differ. I mean, we don't know. <laughs> um, but that was just a general idea of what kind of happens, the process. Um, as far as regulations, we've gotten a couple questions about that. Um, I know some doctors... Uh, like one of the things on that checklist for me was nighttime driving, so I had to set up a special appointment to get that checked off. And um, a lot of doctors think it's like a liability issue for people with albinism or a visual impairment at all to drive at night. Um, for me, I feel like it's more comfortable, and I got checked off on it, so I don't have any regulations. Matt has a like non restricted license. The, the only, only thing, thing on my license it says on the back is corrective, corrective lenses. lenses, which doesn't even specify. So, I mean, if you get pulled over and it says corrective lenses, they don't know that you have to be wearing a bioptic. Unless they type it in the special computer and it comes up bioptic. We which don't know. Which we don't know. <laughs> but as far as I know, um, it just says corrective lenses. But, so that's, I mean, so as far as restrictions, we don't really have them unless you want them or your doctor isn't comfortable with that. That sense of independence is. I don't know. It's a, it's a good feeling. Um, and as far as like best and worst times for us to drive, from what um, what I've seen from Matt, just the only <laughs> bad times are like when the like sunrise sunset, like when the sun is at your eye level and you're driving into it or whatever. Anywhere around it's eye bad. level is just agonizing. But um, I think that's bad for anybody. So it's not especially comfortable. Us. Um. But, like, we're not going to go into what we can and can't see while driving because, really, that's going to vary mm -hmm. for everybody with albinism. If you have specific questions, message us and we can tell you personally. However, like, it's really going to be, you know, like, based off of the person. Quick little side note for those of you out there in the community that do drive and have your own cars... I want to, you know, maybe maybe um, for people who are considering driving and looking to get a car and what would be ideal, I think we should start a little comment thing going on and feel free to chime in. Tell us what kind of car you drive, the things that you do and don't like about it, um, advantages that it has, or some advantages that you might think might be good for, for drivers like us. And uh, that might help, you know, potential new car buyers or first-time drivers kind of find an ideal car that would work best with our types of con or situations types of situations like Matt drives a Mustang and I drive a bug so and personally yeah. from having driven both obviously I like my Mustang much better because the extra power but and stopping power he likes mine a lot comes... more the only other thing I can think of as far as driving um that I've been asked about is our depth perception and people like that just comes along with anyone driving like you have to get used to it. No one's used to driving a car when they first start. And I don't think our vision is necessarily to blame for our bad depth perception when we start driving. Because I think that comes with everyone comes naturally. first starting. And like then you get used to it. You get to know your car better. You know, like, so I don't think... I can park don't let that start. within, you know, Stop. inches of things just because you learn the parameters of your car. But, um... Right. I think that's going to wrap up this video. And if you have more questions, more in-depth stuff, always feel free to comment, message, post, uh, <laughs> I mean anything. And 
Remember to comment down here, you guys. Share your experiences. We'd all love to hear them. Absolutely. Till next time, you guys. Bye. Bye.